Many wonder why Southern Oregon and the nation even need comprehensive immigration reform, why the laws that are already in place are not enforced. The immigration laws that we have on the books need to be enforced first. We have employment laws, we have immigration laws that are not being enforced. A Medford immigration attorney says it's a myth there's a process of paperwork and a waiting line to stand in the back of for everyone wanting to immigrate to America. For the vast majority of people there is no line to stand in so no matter whether they're willing to wait in line or not, if there's no line to stand in, what, what do you do? To be eligible to wait in line to come to the U.S. legally, very specific family relationship, age, marriage, and financial requirements must be met. He says if people do meet these, waiting in back of this backed up line can mean never again seeing your loved ones and the end of your immigration application. For those people who do qualify to stand in line, uh, those lines are of horrendous length. It, it's, it's the waiting can be decades. Uh, people can die while the application is pending. The waiting legal immigrants go through is one reason why Cynthia Kendall, a U.S. citizen, is against legalization of immigrants who are already in the country illegally. I do believe that there should be a way that it can be streamlined, but I certainly don't think that people that willingly willingly break our immigration laws should be given any benefit over people that are waiting in line. Some who waited in line themselves agree the system needs to be quicker. We strive towards the efficiency everywhere else. Why not make the immigration more efficient? But their own experience and the hoops they had to jump through to enter legally gives them an understanding of why people entered illegally to begin with. People who were lucky enough to be born in the States don't realize what hoops we, the legal immigrants, have to jump through. Some legal immigrants say they wouldn't feel wronged if a pathway to legalization were provided for the millions of illegal immigrants in the U.S. If people are self-motivated, if they really want to do good things, they, they should be allowed to do good things. Everybody has different circumstances in their lives. And I think every case has to be considered separately. And there are a lot of illegal immigrants, I believe, have rights to stay in this country and give a lot of benefits to, I'm proud to say, to our country. Opponents say it's never only one case, but one case and everyone else is in the family. We're constantly bringing in these low skill, low wage earners that very often bring big families along with them, sneak them in, they come to visit, they don't go home, whatever, however they get here. And now we have 10 people here for the one guy that came to work in the fields. Experts say the nation needs this population to fill unskilled labor. When you have a, a relatively low birth rate in the United States, in order to maintain any kind of level of, of economic growth, immigration is really important to that. Uh, and some of it is relatively low skilled labor uh, in terms of working in agriculture, working in, in elements of the construction industry. Some of the states that have had the hardest crackdowns on, on illegal immigrants are finding their agricultural growers screaming that, you know, we can't get enough labor into our fields to, to do the harvesting. Uh, they, they, they've tried and they haven't been able to do that. To ensure the future of our social security system. The people going and needing social security benefits in, in their old age we're not going to have enough workers to be able to pay into that system. And so by legalizing these workers that are already here, we are ensuring our own futures because that means that there's going to be money in Social Security for when I need it. And for overall economic growth. If someone is able to work, someone needs to buy a house. That means someone needs to build a house. That means someone needs to furnish the house. Someone needs to build the furniture. So to think of just taking away jobs is a rather simplistic view of how a worker will impact the economy on all different levels and benefit all of us. John Almaguer says employment playing fields would be leveled because employees would have to pay taxes on all workers. He says altogether a safer environment would be created with legalization of the millions who are undocumented, exposing those who may have criminal records. We also get to 
ferret out those people who could be national security concerns who have multiple criminal issues and making sure those who stay follow the rules by taking these people out of the shadows too we're also making a safer environment by granting drivers licenses to people we make the road safer for all of us my wife your family they're on the roads i'd want to know that that driver in the car next to me has a driver's license has received driver training and has insurance having been undocumented himself before the amnesty in 86 dagoberto morales an immigrant rights advocate says comprehensive immigration reform is the moral and right thing to do a lot of people in medfo jackson county josephine county klamath they are suffering because they are afraid to speak out about what's going on for them and the on both side renting a school and medical care he says undocumented agricultural workers today are going through the same oppression he experienced as an illegal immigrant undocumented work in the fields have the same repression like everyone else working without pay pushing to do the work and uh, sometimes um, take it out with INS. The difference for him now, he says, is he can question his boss and he hopes for the same rights for others. From a political standpoint, experts say Republicans have seen the need to support comprehensive immigration reform and may actually benefit from it. If they can do as well as George W. Bush did, getting 40 percent, which isn't necessarily out of the ballpark, simply by not appearing hostile from the point of view of a Latino community uh, and an, to a lesser extent the Asian community, then they can still compete in national elections. The Latino, especially the Mexican, tends to be very conservative in, in, in their politics. And so the Republican agenda would be actually an agenda most Mexicans would tend to gravitate towards. So uh, while people tend to think that if uh, if Mexicans per se were allowed to vote that the Democratic Party would never lose office. It's I think it's it's erroneous. Both Republicans and Democrats have come together to form the so-called Gang of Eight made up of four senators from each party. In January, the bipartisan group released a framework for a comprehensive immigration reform bill. The guideline includes four pillars. The first, a pathway to citizenship for most of the undocumented population currently in the nation. All immigrants would be required to register with the government, would be subject to background checks, and those with serious criminal backgrounds to deportation, pay a fine and back tax taxes, demonstrate a history of work in the U.S., undocumented immigrants would be able to apply for temporary lawful status and would only be able to apply for citizenship after immigrants who have applied for green cards or legal residence as of the time the immigration reform legislation is enacted have had their own applications resolved. Having this temporary lawful status would not make immigrants eligible for many forms of federal public benefit programs. Those brought to the U.S. as children, often called dreamers, would not have to wait as long to apply for a green card and citizenship. The pathway to citizenship is contingent upon stricter border security, but does not state how to determine whether or not the border is secure. The second pillar, a streamlined process allowing highly skilled immigrants and immigrant family members to come or remain in the U.S. The hope is to cut down on the visa backlogs and waiting times families must now wait to reunite, as well as employers and employees to fill jobs. The third pillar, use of an electronic employment eligibility verification education system would be mandated for all employers. It suggested such a system would contain safeguards to protect workers. And the fourth pillar, a process to allow future workers to enter the country more during economic growth and less when the economy isn't doing as well. Laniel Vandermolen says the Senate's proposed framework changes nothing. What it is, is, is a giant legalization of everyone who's here illegally, plus more chain migration, plus increased legal immigration quotas. So it's basically more of what we have, it's just legal. But Ricardo Lujan says it'll completely change his life, enabling him and other undocumented immigrants to finally live their American dream. Ever since I was nine, ever since I came to the United States, I wanted to become a police officer. And since I'm not a U.S. citizen, it's hard for me to be able to become that. So it's not only going to open doors for, you know, driving legal status but in the dreams that individuals have and what career they want to pursue. Covering your news, 
Jessica Denova, News 10.